Right, so something slightly different now for um, mostly for Lunar Dusk's benefit because he's the one that's been taking interest in this. So this is Torx. Well, okay, this on the right is Torx, which is a um, a racing car game um, where instead of you manually controlling the car, so no steering wheel, you know, like or keyboard or mouse or joystick, anything like that, um, you create a program in pretty much any language you want. I'm using C Sharp. Um, and that acts as the sort of robot driver. So you program him what to do. So as an example, let's find a nice simple bit. So if the car's rev meter, so RPM, goes above 7,500 uh, and he's below gear 7, then he'll put the clutch down, shift up a gear, and take his foot off the clutch again. Uh, if it drops below 3,500 and he's above gear one, he'll put the clutch down, go down a gear and take the foot off the clutch again. And then, of course, you have speed control and steering and braking and all the other bits required for driving. Um, it's sort of a university project I'm working on at the moment. Uh, currently, I'm working on getting the core components in. So today I worked on... Um, I tell the robot I want... 200 miles an hour it has to get there as quickly as it can but then stabilize it so you you don't you know you put your foot all the way down on the accelerator until you got very close to 200 and then you'd ease off because you don't want to go flying past it but the robot has to know to do that it's not intelligent like a person unless you make it so you have to code that in um so i was playing around with that it also has a series of sensors, so if you think of Google's car that drives itself, that has a whole array of sensors that look around it so it knows not to drive into things. So that was the other thing I was playing with. Um, if we have a look on the form. So what you're going to see is... Actually, let's start it up and we'll just get it going. And you can look properly. So, off it goes. So currently it's at 100 miles an hour, well 99 to 100, because I've told it to sit at 100. Um, these three here are the proportional integral and differential controls, which is how accurately it's getting to its speed, so don't worry too much about that. These bars you're seeing are the sensors. So as number 9 in the middle here is the forward looking one, and this on the side is meters, so for 200 meters, which is its maximum range, it's not seeing anything. It's not seeing the edge of the track. As we start to come towards that corner, this will start coming down because that corner's getting closer. There you go. And then when it gets to the point where the next sensor spots it, that will come down. And as the corner opens up, the ones on the other side will go up. So this, this is what the sensor array is spotting when it comes to open track corners and the like. And we can speed it up. So I'm telling it it's allowed to go faster now. And if we tell it it's allowed to go too fast, you'll see it crash horribly. So let's have a have a look at that. Oh no, I'm going too fast for the corner. Oh, that's a wall. Round we go. Sensor's going crazy. What way do I steer? I have no idea. I'm a stupid robot. And there we go. We're back on the track again. So if I wait till we get to a straight. The other thing I was working on was anti-lock braking. So if you just brake massively hard, your wheels lock up. So you brake hard until you start locking up and then you start pumping the brake so that you don't completely freeze up. Um, I'm, it's set at 30 at the moment, which is why it's crawling along. So you're going from a really high speed to a really slow speed without trying to lock up the wheels. I'm still working on it. These here are the revolution speeds of the wheels, so as these start to go down and look like they're about to lock up, you need to stop pushing on the brake. But I'm still playing with that at the moment. So we'll try it again. So they hit zero, which means they've completely frozen. Um, so it isn't doing it properly. It's not deploying the anti-braking lock braking system quick enough. So this is the kind of stuff I'm playing around with at university at the moment. Uh, coding a racing car, basically. <laughs> but there you go. So eventually, once I've got all of these core systems in place, I'll start programming the... It's not really an AI, but the... Um, decision algorithms on where it should be on the track for any given corner what speed it should take a corner at all those rather more difficult concepts 
um, which will have to be determined from this sensor data because it doesn't know anything about the track in advance. But that's what I'm working on at the moment and uh, I thought I would share my progress. Uh, this is all completely free software so if anyone's interested in programming and actually does this stuff and is suddenly intrigued by this feel free to send me a private message either on YouTube or wherever and I'll send you all the details on where you can download all this stuff it's all free um, free environments so you can work on it quite happily of your own accord if you want to get into this sorts of thing there are competitions they do race these cars against other people uh, actually if I set this up quickly let's let's pick a more interesting track shall we let's, let's try something like that and instead of my car we will uh, deselect that and put in some of these much better coded cars that come with the engine so these guys now have to avoid each other as well as the track try to overtake all sorts of other fun things see he's going to get overtaken on the inside but not quite because then there's this corner so it's basically making your racing AI for your racing games but uh, using sensor data that could be ported across into real vehicles Ooh, bit of a collision there someone's code didn't go so well anyway you get the idea I just thought I would share that with you so back onto the more sensible games now we'll move on to uh, Europa